Bam, 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 bam. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> it is. Dine, go home show before all out. Kill me. <clears throat> so we're still in the same setting. Same fat fan race. And of course, lackluster build, other than the MJF and Moxley thing. We had proud and powerful. That sounds like a woman's feminist group. Then an actual pay, then uh, supposed to be a hood like name for both Santana and Ortiz. But that's beyond my control. How effed up is the record with them as a tag team? I understand they affiliate with Jericho's faction, but they're six of four. Best friends are 14 and five. And this was as one sided as it got. Never mind. Ortiz and Santana won anyway, because this gay fact, this gay, f I was about to say, uh, the F word, but, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, this gay team, with some semblance of, they attacked them back, uh, behind their backs, they had a fight at dark, they wrecked their, Trent's mother's van, yeah, this opened the show, well, we had Chuck getting chucked over, <laughs> Freaking chairs. Uh, then he came around after not selling that he got stacked upon chairs and ruined his back. He did a plancha, a top rope plancha over Ortiz and Santana. Uh, so the, this dumb, I think it's supposed to be a vertebraker. I don't know what it's called. Bammed it uh, until like I think Ortiz broke the cover. Uh, Santana and Ortiz did win the match for just the overloaded under consumable feud for no reason other than to just keep Trent and the guy, the manager of GameStop Chuck to just think that this match is important. Next we had an eight man tag again. We had like literally an we had a literal gauntlet and a freaking eight man tag last week. Why? What's what's their what's what do they sodomize themselves looking at like free birds crap or something? We had SCU, which is Kazarian and Christopher Daniels and Private Party against the Young Bucks and Jurassic Express. And the teaser was over at the Young Bucks getting pissed off over Hangman Page, costing them the tag belts at the Gauntlet match. <clears throat> and it just went as blickably planned as it was. That they were still doing spots, but they got angry at one fan. I think it was either Matt or Nick tossing a beer and ripping a sign over drinking my beer. is the stupidest thing with fans just putting their germs while it's COVID season. You would think the smartest thing to do is give a pro wrestler your beard. A guy constantly half naked and fighting other dudes. Probably con congesting all the germs and mucus. And all the, that other garbage, and you think the smartest thing you do is just share your dirty beer with another man? That's weird to me. Yeah, the match was as basic as it got. Luchasaurus did a back did a backflip, I mean, did a moonsault. Of course, I gotta respect the Christopher Daniels and Frank Kazarian over the late, great uh, Chadwick Boseman that recently passed away. So that was cool. That was a cool thing to do the Wakanda Forever crap. Uh, we had some spots over the corner with the private party. Of course, there was a slingshot, a slingshot leg drop, a leg drop over the top of the Young Bucks. It's just easy, just SCU and the Young Bucks had most of the spots while it just felt like that we had some back and forth with Jungle Boy and Kazarian, but this wasn't really telling much except until... Like, after the Meltzer driver, they just walked off because, oh my god, they're angry at Hangman Page. They had Tully Blanchard talking to... Oh boy, they had... Okay, they had a Tully Blanchard going over. You won the gauntlet. You guys are ready. You went over this stuff or we're back as contenders. And personal things aside, the best thing is we win the tag titles to show prestige. And then they put the three signs up, looking like it's incomplete. It's a middle finger. <laughs> uh, all right, promo. Dax Harwood and Cash. I can't get used to that. I'm sorry. Why do? Why both AEW and WWE? They both have crap names. It's so bad, man. 
that now it now sounds like they molested some hick chick in GTA 5. They look like it. Just why do most of these old people just get a ride off of FTR? Next up, we had uh, Joey Janela versus Chris Jericho with Hager backstage talking to Orange Cassidy, inviting him into uh, Jericho's match to watch, obviously, to threaten him. Even though you're, the match is going to be so comedic, you're going to be tossing a man into a mimosa. Chris Jericho can get people over. Again, I love Chris Jericho, but this match was so meh. It's already dumb enough that he came from using the cool move like a crowd breaker from uh, a Judas effect. That's just Andrade's signature move that doesn't get a three count. So uh, he was you just beating the ever living piss out of uh, Joey Janela that looks like a Wendy's girl. Uh, the selling factor just comes into him taunting. Uh, I think there was a vertical suplex. He, was, he kept tossing him around. There was a flying shoulder that I don't know why Joey had to jump that high for. Tossed him down until he tried to go for a springboard. Nothing until it went into a code breaker. And it ended off him getting knocked out for the Lion Tamer. He busted him open and then let him out and smeared the shirt of what Jericho was wearing. That was Orange Cassidy. And tore it apart. The, symbol, the symbolism is apparent even though you're tossing a man into a giant heap of alcohol and, uh, and orange juice. Jericho came. Uh, Sunny Kiss got his ass beat because I hate Sunny, K Sunny Kiss. Thank God for that. We also had uh, Orange Cassidy getting jumped uh, until they took out Hager. Poured out the champagne, and that's about it. His screw a little bit of the bubbly. It's the dumbest meme. It's the only sort of relevance that AEW gets in any source of mainstream credibility other than their crappy roster. Next up, we had Taz hyping up Ricky Starks and Brian Cage to be one of the winners in the Battle Royale to earn a shot for the World Championship if either uh, Moxley and or MJF wins. During that, uh, after insulting Jake the Snake Roberts, he came around interrupting the promo, calling them the biggest, the best set of losers. Then it ended up with uh, Eddie Kingston. So it's all be beer bellied old men arguing over which one of their midget factions could win over literally Eddie Kingston cutting off a fake rookie Starks thing. Then calling, obviously he called, uh, yeah, he he thinks uh, Ricky Starks looked like a fruit ball. I, I thought Ricky Starks looked gay at the time when I saw him on NWA Power anyway. But no, he's just a generic, I'm happy to be here, I've worked my whole life for this wrestler. So, uh, then, Tully Blanchard just came around walking in the background that looks like, uh, Sean Spears was going over a hangover because he jobbed out probably again at dark. So I don't care. Uh, and it ended up with everybody just fighting. Uh, Jake the Snake just whispering around his stupid promos going like, just just, look, just follow the buzzards. He, he just sounds like a terrible GTA 5 D DLC villain or something. And it's sad because back in the, like back I saw on YouTube because obviously I'm too young to know what Jake the Snake Roberts did. I only saw him like, one time, I think it was 2004 Raw, when he was talking to Randy Orton. That was the only time I saw him. I was like, Jesus Christ, you guys like this guy? He, uh, he's fat. And uh, I don't want to be disrespectful. Obviously, I saw his work on YouTube and stuff. And I can say that uh, he's a really incredible promo. And it's sad how they, they just make it feel like uh, freaking Jake the Snake is a caretaker other than a manager. For what's supposed to be a berserking mongol like uh lance archer that looks like he has bad bitch hair the bra brawl ensues with the rest of the midget jobbers coming around then it has uh lance archer going everyone dies and then it had 
er everybody coming around with, uh, of course, probably uh, Jake the Snake rubbing his belly. Next up, we have Thunder Rosa versus Serena D. Is that how you say her name? I don't. I don't want to know. Of course, she did not wrestle since 2017, and she competed in the Mae Young Classic. If you want to know, I don't really care. I'm really looking at up her information on the website while reviewing this. This was an okay match, to be honest. Decent chain wrestling, but it was Thunder Rosa literally just taking up most of the, uh, you know, opportunity with really good forearms. It just shows how aggressive she can be. And I saw her matches on, I think, uh, I think it was called All, uh, Hard Times and Into the Fire, her matches, when she won the NWA title against Allison K. Yeah, she's a good hard knocks wrestler, and it looks like she knows a lot of technical, a te technical ability. And out of most of this, these are literally the better matches than you guys think. Raiho and Nyla Rose, it's literally a dude over the benefactor of a match hyping up a wrestler. Even though it's literally just a dude beating up a woman that looks like she's been malnourished and she was 11 years old. Next up, we had Rosa breaking, uh, you know, a Rosa, uh, Thunder Rosa, you know, t uh, taunting with the, her women's title and a backstabber on Deebs. Obviously, sending a message to Hikadushida. Oh boy. So yes, congratulations to Thunder Rosa. This is NWA's only semblance of excitement. We also had a promo package over most of the matches that are going to happen on Dynamite, on All Out, especially the Broken Rules Matt Hardy that is supposed to go over an identity con uh, complex, but uh, they're trying to make it in a positive light. I don't particularly care. Because this is just Matt Hardy just going in a bottom mid-card fight with no semblance of storytelling other than he accidentally busted him open with a chair. If that makes any sense to you, that I don't agree with. But, uh, yeah. We also had, uh, Mark Sterling. That just seems like a regular wrestler at the time when he was speaking to Moxley back in the contract signing. Was trying to find an out out of his match he had with Moxley later that night. And it ended up with MJF threatening him, putting him into a wood chipper instead of competing in a match with Moxley. And he was considered a joke and they wasted way too much time. It could have just been an easy taunt and then a freaking paradigm shift. And it's, he, and it's like I'm trying to really condense my patience for John Moxley's reign, because it's just him snarling along while ru while rolling his shoulders, trying to bring any semblance of intimidation to anybody while he's balding. And it just felt so boring over his entire promo, over, you know, most, most of him just saying that he'll choke him out, he'll do everything without using the paradigm shift. MJF was literally radiant over the promo, when he was until then taking out the neck, the of course neck brace, taking off a suit, getting rid of the crutches. Oh, by the way, Big Swole got attacked by uh, Britt Baker. Just to bring how relevant a long time feud can be built up by AEW, she got smeared with pizza and then hit with a crutch. Congrats for storytelling, AEW. Uh, after paradigm shifting Sterling, he just got beaten up, busted open, not in the forehead. Embarrassed and then hoisted the title for the generic heel to lift the title looking like he's gonna win. So that's Dynamite. It's really I I don't want to say lackluster build. It's lackluster build. And over your dumb specials from your cons overly consistent uh multi-man matches with no semblance of hype factored in that you want me to care about this dark order crap. With everybody fighting back and blah blah blah, and it's, and it's like there gotta be a major focus to something, man. And I'm I'm just not feeling it. 
Hopefully the pay-per-view is better than it sounds, because it just sounds super boring with only one important match. I don't care about no casino battle royal. I don't care about Dark Order just having a random eight-man tag match. Why is Jurassic Express against the Young Bucks more important than a feud that they have literally had since April? By the factor that she was in, she was in probably kayfabe injury for five months until September, and oh god, this this women's match like it's cool to see Thunder Rosa, and just please end Omega and Adam Page's. Th uh, Adam Page's dumb reign with the tag belts that lasted for over 200 days. We also had the freaking a uh, promo involving FTR taunting while Kenny Omega was having his promo over uh, Hangman obviously getting really uh, kicked out of the elite. And it's like, yeah, you win some, you lose some. But uh, now Hangman got to deal with this for the rest of his life until he knew that FTR is probably going to attack him. So, yeah. That was the show, because it just ended up with he with them calling Hangman a piece of shit, and they censored a piece of shit super late, even though Jericho says it consistently, nearly anybody else says a piece of shit, or a couple of ass hats, even though they censored hats instead of ass, but a specific insult could be censored. Jericho probably still looking fat, calling, I don't know, Orange Cassidy a sack of shit or something. I don't care. But uh, this is uh, the go-home show for Dynamite. I'll give it like a 4 out of 10 in my opinion. It's been like all episode episodes of Dynamite in my opinion, man. Hopefully it gets better. I just MJF to win or something. Just to bring some sort of, you know, character into the world title scene. Because it's just been bland world champions. Jericho at least brings some semblance of popularity. Because he was a heel. He was beatable. He showed some semblance of, of babyface needing to beat him. He made the belt seem important. And it just felt so gay. So it's, it, it's either just give it to MJF. Or just make a different character for Moxley at this point. I'm not interested in the Battle Royal. And it's just been over a fluctuation of tag team matches. That you assholes just put instead of like storytelling. And that's really holding your show back. So uh, that's that's it for Dynamite. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's it coming from me. Hopefully you guys like to review.